because our next guest thinks volatility in the market has led to some exacerbated valuations at the moment akin to history repeating itself. So he says, wait and pounce, but wait. Marcus Bogdan here from Blackmore Capital joining us live uh, from Melbourne via Skype. Pleasure to have you, Marcus. So what do you think? I mean, just give us an idea of how you're reading markets at the moment in terms of, yes, we're seeing volatility, um, but where you see valuations right now. Good morning, Ingrid. Well, we've had an extraordinary recovery, uh, almost 20% for the ASX 200, which looking forward on a 12-month uh, forward PE puts the market on around 17 times. And that's assuming a base case of a 20% reduction in earnings per share for FY 20. So that 17 times forward is around about 18 to 19% above the long long term average and we think that um, markets have got ahead of themselves given the uncertainty around economic and earnings fun fund fundamentals so we would probably see either a range bound or some sort of mild retracement from here which will then allow us to look at companies, quality companies mm -hmm. at more re reasonable prices which we still think that there's Lack of earnings visibility. Uh, there's capital raisings, which are which are uh, which are issuance, which are diluting earnings per share. Um, we've got cuts or suspensions in in in, div in dividends, uh, and we've and we've indicated yesterday with BHP that th there's potential there for certainly lower capital expenditure or lower activity in the economies, and so. That's why we're suggesting sort of a pause in the markets and just waiting to see better value emerge. And then we can go back and look at some of these higher quality companies at more reasonable prices. So what do you think, Marcus, would be the catalyst for that retracement? Well, I, th I think as we move out of uh, this lock lockdown, uh, you know, the issues of restarting the econ the economy. I think in some areas that it will certainly be uh, it will certainly be slower and disappointment potentially disappointment around around that as as well. Uh, and companies are being bolstered by things like JobKeeper and rent reductions. Mm. Uh, they have got a finite life to the end of end of sept September, and they are certainly bolstering importantly bolstering co companies uh, cost basis at, at the moment but then those costs will be borne by the comp companies go going going forward so I think lack of vis visibility uh, and and still con continued uncertainty will I think and also where valuations are now we think are just too elevated given the backdrop of, of economic and earnings fundamentals. And, and is that how you've been reading? I mean, we've been hearing quarterly updates from a lot of businesses. I mean, yes, the banks have had full year results mostly. But what's your take on, I guess, what we've been hearing from companies when it comes to the impact of, of the crisis, of the health pandemic? Um, has that been as expected, a little worse than expected? We've also been hearing a lot of capital raisings from businesses. What's your take on the impact on business right now? Well, it's certainly not universal. And even with companies, you're seeing big divergences. Like, for example, in Wes Farmers, you're seeing very good sales numbers coming out of Officeworks and Bunnings, which is, is you know, 67% of, of their revenue base. But on the other side, both Kmart and Target and their resources and chemicals businesses are, are, str are struggling. So I think it's dependent on... Um, the, the, the businesses and the industries that they're, that they're in. Um, other industries such as healthcare, you've had pauses in activity. Um, and then other things like telecommunications where you've got greater data use or, or consumer, st consumer staples. Amcor um, in the last couple of days has been suggestive, reasonably buoyant conditions. So I think you have to be incredibly granular and that's how we're approaching sort of our sort of portfolio construction at the moment. Yeah, and some of the companies that you're, you're talking to, uh, that are talking about that are quality companies, I guess, and, and you may want to sort of take opportunity of if, if perhaps um, a retracement does occur, is across a lot of sectors, different sectors. You've got some in healthcare, you've got some in industrials, you've got, uh, just talk us through your, your reasoning behind selection of some particular companies and what they are. 
Yeah, sure. Um, certainly looking at companies where they've got significant market shares in their industry, they're number one operators. So for West Farmers, for example, Bunnings and Officeworks. In healthcare, um, it would be something like Ramsey, where we're really seeing um, de demand being delayed. Uh, and so you've got both demand coming back on, the government um, suggesting that both Category 2 and Category 3 sectors will, will come come on. Uh, and then also in areas like waste, waste management, where you're seeing elevated levels of household waste lower volumes in SMEs, but in the commercial space, particularly around supermarkets, you're still seeing very good levels. So it would be the particular industries, um, either the, the number one or the number two players, and also the characteristics of those companies are that they've got very strong balance sheets. Wes Farmers has got one of the strongest balance sheets on the ASX 200, almost net net cash, given uh, their divestments of, of the Coles, Coles shares. Um, Ramsey have already had a capital raising, and so they've got plenty of liquidity there. Uh, and then CleanAway has got a net debt to EBITDA of about 1.6 1, 1 times. And so it's earnings visibility, industry position, and balance sheet strength are the sort of the, the core premises of what we would look at in terms of quality companies. And then at the end of that, we're trying to buy those companies at fair, at fair value. Yeah, which becomes the hard part, I guess. And that's what we're sort of talking about, getting fair value at the moment. But Yes, it does. Of... And, and somewhat subjective as well. Exactly. Exactly. Very subjective, as you say. Um, I guess when it comes to capital raising, because we've seen a lot of capital raisings um, across the board. And as you say, for very different reasons, some are bolstering their balance sheet, just taking advantage, perhaps in a strong position. Others need the funds, obviously, um, to pay off debt and... and, and um, bolts of the balance sheet for those reasons. What's your take on capital raisings at the moment for companies that you like? Do you participate? I mean, in terms of, I guess, reading that situation, what's your view? Well, I think the companies that have come to the market so far have been high, high quality. If you look at um, Cube, um, Lendlease, Ra Ramsey, very, very strong companies, which are, uh, as you rightly point out, are bolstering their, their balance sheets. They're looking at opportunities go going forward. They're reducing, reducing debt. So they're keeping all of their options open. And so when those high quality companies are coming to the market, I think there's great interest in those. And obviously the subsequent performance post the raisings uh, has demonstrated that as, as well. All right, Marcus, we'll leave it there with you, but really appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining us. You're most welcome. Thank you.